So I'm here with Reckless Ben, and we're infiltrating a cult called the Yellow Deli, wearing spy glasses, and they have no idea we're recording. Hey, hey. But if you missed episode three, the leader of this cult's famously known for saying, if you're gay, you should be put to death. I basically told him that my fiance had a gay thought once. They told me there'd be consequences to that, and that she would get sick. So we went with their narrative and told them that because my fiance had a gay thought once, now she's deathly sick. But they told me to stay because they have a quote called, let the dead bury the dead. I thought that was stupid, so I escaped to go visit her. A lot of you guys thought that this was the end. We're not in the cult anymore. This is actually just the beginning. But now we're going back. All right, we're on. They haven't seen us in uh, probably a few days now, and we just show back up unannounced. We're never gonna leave. It's been really intense. I didn't even get any sleep last night. I'm like kind of brain dead right now. I think we we're pulling an all-nighter at this point, so I'm tired, and I had to tell them the news that Lydia's dead. Basically, uh, Lydia didn't end up making it. No. Uh, are you serious? Yeah. No. Are you serious? Yeah, every day she kept getting worse and worse, and then finally this morning she passed away. I think it was like at like 8 in the morning or something. They were like, you need to stay around because we need to get like a funeral director or something. And then I just left and came back here because I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I just came straight back here. And, um, it, it's... I mean, this is the ultimate test, you know, that Satan's putting us through. I'm trying to gain their trust. I'm trying to make a believable story. And I think God called me back here, you know, and I think this might be all part of the plan. Like, there's almost nothing else that can be taken away from me now, you know? And then we told one of the other cult members that Lydia passed away. And this is the first thing that he said. This is the first thing that, like, came to his mind. Better that he would have been aborted, you know, than actually come to birth and grow up and become somebody betrayed or master. But it might have been better if someone died in the womb or they died when they were years old. He was like, I see it's hard for you that the love of your life did something against God, where if she would have been aborted, you would have never fallen in love with her. None of this bad stuff would have ever happened. It's kind of what he's saying, but it is really insensitive. Like it does kind of just show like how like apart from the rest of like reality they are like uh oh it's better for someone to be aborted than have a gay thought that's just proof that he genuinely believes that like god is killing her because she had a gay thought and like oh it's just so crazy that he's saying that then do evil deeds and reap what you sow at least when you're in the womb or you're a little baby you're not gonna reap any bad seeds because you didn't sow any bad seeds you just you don't know any better reaping the bad seeds means she's gonna die for her gay thoughts if that makes sense if she was aborted she would have never had to reap these bad seeds he's gonna bring an end to it uh, they're not sure yet. I think it's a combination of asthma and pneumonia and also we don't really believe in medicine that much so like I guess we didn't get the proper treatment. Well this guy came up to me and he said like hey if you want to be a part of this community like we don't use medicine. He's like none of us here use medicine. We don't believe in medicine. Basically just playing into their narrative of uh, I did what you guys told me to do and look how it turned out. She died. And then their response back is, you guys followed God's plan and God's plan led to her dying, but at least it's God's plan, you know? I think they said what she actually died from was called asphyxiation, I think, is what the doctor said. Dude, how do you even know what that is? I just looked up like, how can you die from pneumonia? And Google just said asphyxiation. Asphyxiation, I think I said it right. I also don't want to overthink it, I guess. Because I started thinking like, is this my fault and stuff? Like, could I have saved her before? I don't know. You can't think like that, Ben. You guys had wonderful time before all this. You have to think about all the good times and nothing's your fault. Ben's trying to act sad. I wish he had some tears, though. Yeah, all my friends that have watched this footage so far, they're like, wow, you really played into this sad character. You look really sad. Really, I was just on like an all-nighter of no sleep. So I was just tired. Same with right now. I'm also on very little sleep. I'm groggy. I took a lot of melatonin last night, so I'm still <laughs> groggy. So maybe I seem sad right now also. And they told us not to go to her funeral. I don't necessarily go to a funeral, like, thinking, like, it's, like, a responsibility of ours to be in the funeral, like, funeral, funeral. And then he told us this story about, well, I'll just let him tell you. I lost the baby. Was it when you were here? Yeah. Yeah. Was it part of the childbirth? Didn't get executed properly, or? I mean, if we would have been in the hospital and they would have cut her open and pulled the baby out. <laughs> but, like, I don't think we don't believe in that. Yeah. We're not bitter about it anymore. They just don't believe in medicine that much where they'll literally let someone die. They'd rather let go of a human life than use medicine. Oh my goodness, huh? Honestly, this part was so hard to stay in character because, like, obviously Lydia's not dead. Hi, I'm not dead, but um, my throat kind of hurts for other reasons. I don't know. I was just like sad that they like actually believe this. The fact that they actually like don't want to use medicine and like okay with people dying because they've had a gay thought like actually made me sad. So like at this point I wasn't even like close to cracking. I was kind of like just empathizing with them. I was like, this is like sad. This is actually the reality that these guys live in. 
So then we started telling other cult members about Lydia's death, but we sat down with one at lunch, and uh, this was our conversation. The doctor yeah. said she died from asphyxiation, I think is what they said. It said something like your body stops being able to breathe. It's the timing of it all. Interesting to me. Well, the timing's only interesting because they think she died because of a gay thought she had. We obviously set that up for it to be interesting timing, but they're catching on on the timing that we set up for them. It would have been better if you yeah, had been been born. Better. Maybe this is stopping her from going down a bad path. Mm -hmm. okay, could be. So one of the lies I told them is I was house sitting, and that's the only reason why I couldn't live there. But to gain their trust, I told them I was only house sitting for one month, and that I'm going to be living with them after that month. How many days left now, Daniel? A week from today. Wow. Yeah. Counting down. We already got a bed ready for you, I heard. But I only said that lie because I had to go home each night, upload all the footage to the hard drive, empty the memory card, and recharge all the spy gear for the next day. Shit, don't know. Yeah, but this isn't my phone though, so in a week, I have to give the phone back. As yeah, he has a personal phone and a business number. He says, okay, here, take my personal phone, I'll take my business, and then, like, that's not even my car either. I have to give all it back, so I'm very, very thankful that he's letting me use it. Yeah, I'm not going to give him my number, but I do have a phone. That car that I was saying that wasn't mine, that was my parents' Prius. They let me borrow it because I didn't want them to know the actual car that I drive. And I tinted the windows in that Prius. So when Ben and I were strategizing, changing out the spy gear. Take a memory card from Fear. Okay, how many more memory cards do you need? Come to the yard with me because you need the spy watch. Okay. They couldn't see anything in that car. I do escape the cult in the last episode. So I did what the logical person would do and I left. But because I did something that uses logic, I lost a lot of their trust. So by me going to see my dying fiance, they don't trust me anymore. So I had to go in front of the entire cult now and I had to give the absolute speech of my life. I had to give the ultimate redemption speech if I wanted them to accept me back now. Lydia, you guys have all met her before. She's been here many times. We're four days away from getting married. She ended up passing away in the hospital yesterday actually. and. I got scared, I ran to her, and I should have never left. I should not be with the love of my life as she's basically dying. Instead, I should have been here on the farm. I should have been surrounding myself with good people. I'm uh, putting a lot of faith in God through this. One of the things he says is, let the dead bury the dead. Am I gonna go and bury the dead, or am I gonna go and follow God? So much faith in Yahshua, and I'm ready to give my whole life to him. I'm ready to just blindly follow and do whatever Yahshua tells me to do. Well, we gained their trust back, Ben. You killed it on that speech, dude. Yeah. Now it's back to some hard manual labor. Because that's what they do if they trust you, is they send you to work. I want to marry somebody outside of my race. Yeah, you want it? Mexican or Native American. Even if they were the best person in the entire world, like they loved God. It's the most attractive girl in the entire world. The one condition is she is not white. Our father will have to be. I feel like that was the nice way of saying he can't marry outside of his race. Or like in the outside world, it's like people are very outside race. My father knew everything that was going to happen. We're fallen human beings. Our father didn't intend for that to happen. He didn't necessarily intend for it to happen, though. No. In the Bible, weren't you saying that, like, you should not... Yeah, you should. ...should marry within race? In Israel, our father told Israel to be within the country Israel. Don't have foreign wives. It ended up bad for me when I tried to marry Lydia. I don't know. Did it go bad for you, or...? Well, yeah, she's, like, not here anymore, you know? Yeah. I've never taught the marry in race thing before I came here, you know? So I think that might have been kind of my problem. Obviously he feels bad because like the love of my life just died. And so he's trying to water it down for me, but I don't want him to water it down for me because that makes terrible content. So I'm just trying to say like, okay, I'm on board with everything you're saying. Even though it's illogical for me to agree with you, I'm going to agree with you. So that you stop watering this down for me. Basically the outside world teaches that it's okay to marry like from race to race. You know I mean, they're like, they almost say it's like a good thing. And, yeah. And so I was like brainwashed by society telling me like oh it's okay that you're white and you can marry a chinese person i felt like that was an okay thing for me to do and that's why i actually proposed to her because i thought i loved her and then i come here and i'm learning all this new stuff ben good improv i'm so happy we met you i've learned so much and i do not like the outside world we're basically doing this to get him to answer something like what we're trying to do right now you're like lydia was a full chinese i'm fully white we would have created a baby that's like half chinese and half white that would have been terrible is that not really common to see not necessarily common in the 12 tribes. Yeah, not common in the 12 yeah, tribes. Yeah, it's almost like we would be like almost creating our own race, you know? It's like, it just is weird. Yeah. Well, thanks for the letting us know. Oh yeah, no problem. One rule of not getting caught when you're trying to expose an evil cult is 
just agree with everything. Never not agreed with something you said, Cleo. That's why I really respect you and I appreciate you showing us the way. So after some hard manual labor, it's time for Ben and I to have another shift at the Yellow Deli. But I told Danny to dive in super deep to go balls to the wall. But the cult members at the deli, they don't know anything about Lydia's death. But did you guys end up hearing about Lydia? Ben's... Ben's... fiance? Is he telling you a little about Lydia? I haven't heard anything. She passed away. She passed Today at 8 in the morning. Yeah, he's just he's just trying to work to get his mind off of it. But Whoa. yeah. Ben's fiance. Whoa, that's yeah, crazy. weird thing was. I don't know if you heard because you guys aren't living at the location that we are, but those are all family, so I think Ben would be cool with me telling. But I guess she was having thoughts about like day thoughts about women and so Ben was already skeptical about it about his fiance. And then it was like the next day after she went to the farm, she got really sick, like really sick, like pneumonia, and she had really bad asthma. And I don't know, we were thinking maybe God was punishing her because I don't know why she was having those thoughts. It was really strange. So, so yeah, yeah. So. Oh, I'm Daniel. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I said just don't care about the consequences. We're not here to gain their trust anymore. Just ask them, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, don't chicken out of asking him this question. But do you think he should have been? I don't want to tell him this, but I feel like he knows. Like, was it kind of weird he was with Chinese girl anyways? <laughs> like, shouldn't he marry but then race? <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't the Bible say that too? I don't know. The Bible's so specific, but there's definitely something to cultural boundaries. Yeah. That, that is. Perspective. You brought up the question right after you said that Lydia died. It might have been a little awkward timing, I guess, for you to bring that up. You can tell that he's still like, white person, Chinese person, don't go together. But he's trying to water it down and say it in the most professional way possible. Because you told him that my fiance just died. So it's just a little awkward, I guess. I'm sorry, I, I went big. You, you were in the bathroom, you were like, dude, go big. So I, I went big. I always imagine him with a, with a wife, though, but... But enough chit-chat. It's back to work. Is that Ben? Yeah, we're doing dishes. Oh, nice. You almost look like brothers. Gotten out a bunch. You almost look alike. We get that a lot, actually. Yeah, so I just need you to so never so leave. Ben and I are, were virgins, and a lot of surfers, they didn't like that. They never even kissed a girl before. There's even times at surf contests that people had signs saying, don't let the virgin win, and it was, it was so messed up. Oh, really? Yeah. This is where I live, right here. Oh, really? Oh, oh this is your room? Yeah. Oh, wow. Everybody that works at the deli here, Lives we here. all live in Vista. I actually think that's crazy that part of the cult lives full time at the restaurant. See you soon. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. So now it's the next day and I'm in front of all the cult members and I just, I don't know, I felt it. I felt, I was feeling a speech and I wanted to get real inspirational on them. I just wanted to say something really quick. I'm very thankful that I had my first shift at the Yellow Deli. I actually asked Khalil, what do you prefer, working at the farm or the Yellow Deli? And he goes, whatever our father wants us to do. And that's what I'm willing to do. Whatever our father wants us to do, I'm willing to do. Because I'm older now, I realized like, surfing was a selfish sport. It was very selfish. Like, what did I gain in the world? That was just a, a me thing. I'm being so selfish right now, Yellow Deli. But I will say anything to gain your trust. And it actually feels really good to be having a purpose in life and dedicating my life to Yahshua. I really appreciate every single one of you. I know I'm new here, so if I'm doing anything wrong, please don't be afraid to, to tell me. I'm, I love learning. Yeah, I'm here. You'll see a lot more of me starting Monday, and I'm just very, very thankful, and I love all of you. I think we gained the trust back, Ben. We're back in this. This is good, because we can stay in this cult longer and expose more secrets. So after my inspirational speech, it was back to the hard manual labor. You mentioned this to anyone on the outside world. If I would have told them like, oh, they're teaching me to marry in race here, like they would say like, oh, that's racist. Yeah, how is that racist? If you want to know all the racist beliefs, you're going to have to wait till episode five. The next episode, it is completely disgusting on the things they said about black people, the things they said about Jewish people. We have it all in episode five. We're doing this not just for YouTube. We're doing this for a bigger purpose. We want to take down this cult. I am mentally just drained from the cult. I'm home. I'm tired. I'm nervous. I'm Daniel the Virgin. I just, I got to stay in character this whole time. And it's just, it's draining. Make sure you subscribe to Reckless Ben because he's got a version of this as well. But I'll see you guys on the next episode with my spy glasses hopefully I don't break character you guys want to see what a real racist cult looks like you're not going to want to miss the next episode i'm going to bed i have crazy anxiety i need some sleep and i'll see you guys on the next episode baby all right peace
No.